Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Salah Khan YouTube channel. We are discussing the topic of overhead line insulator in which in the previous video we analyzed an insulator string. Now first of all, uh, if I talk about why uh, this insulator is used, so it is used to, to you know, isolate the bare conductor from the ground structure. The, the, the overhead transmission line is a bare conductor. So to give it a support, you know, you have the tower and you have the cross arm, but you cannot electrically connect it because everything will be grounded then. So to isolate it from the grounding structure, you provide those insulators. And in the previous video, while drawing the equivalent circuit, I you know assume the resistance to be infinite and why is that so because of I'm talking about an insulator so a good the good the insulator the higher is its resistance so I consider the best insulator to have an infinite resistance so that is why I ignore the resistance or you can say you know for my mathematical analysis to become simple for idealization because I don't have time or maybe I am weak in circuit analysis if you know I draw over here a resistor in parallel as well or in series so then the things you know get difficult anyways so in the previous video we came to a conclusion we came to a conclusion that the voltages are not shared equally among the discs right yes the the, the disc nearest to the conductor is overstressed and the disc nearest to the ground structure is under stress as you move to, from the conductor to the ground structure the voltage level reduces as we saw in the previous video have a look the first one is taking 42 percent of the total voltage whereas the third is taking a 26 percent so there is an ample amount of a difference the string efficiency was a term that you know defines what that defines the non-uniformity uh, in the voltage distribution and in the previous video it was 79 percent in this particular video i want to you know improve my string efficiency or reduce this non-uniformity or reduce this gap among the voltages right yes now the thing is that this one is overstressed so you know it has a chance of failure if a power frequency over voltage occurs then it is at a higher risk of failure so if this fails then the stress would be only on the remaining two units and hence the second one would have a chance of failure it fails then the third consequently the fourth and this is called a cascaded failure so what can you do is you can provide a safety factor you can provide a safety factor and what is that so for instance i provide normally the safety factor is two which means two extra discs are provided but then have a look the cost is increasing or maybe if this two safety factor is working for my power frequency over voltages it is fine i would go for the cost but then we don't have only the power frequency voltage we have the surges that comes from the lightning that comes from the switching surges and in the lightning the voltage level reaches the megavolts range so will this string be able to sustain it so let's say for that i need to have the safety factor of five or six which means five or six additional discs per string and how many strings do you have for instance you're talking from Peshawar to to, to Rawalpindi you have a 200 kilometers let's say per kilometer you've got a uh, you've got a what you've got a tower so what do you have is 200 towers each disc has got let's say 500 kV you have got 34 discs you are increasing it by a number of six then six multiplied by 200 go for the cost right yes yeah. similarly it has a weight 5 kg 6 kg we saw in the introductory video it will go for the bending it will you know uh, produce have a force it will have a bending produce moment around the cross arm so for that you will need then what then you will need a stronger cross arm a strong material the tower so again you know going for the economics so i will not go for this method to go for an additional units and additional units again and again i will not go for this the other thing is i can go for capacitance grading i can go for capacitance grading and what do i mean by that i mean is that i will change the capacitance of this 
uh, insulator which means I will change the insulator now the capacitance of a capacitance depends on the dielectric for a parallel plate capacitor it is epsilon naught epsilon r a upon d which means it depends on the thickness it depends on two things number one is the thickness the other one is the permittivity if I vary the thickness if I vary the thickness, let's suppose D1 is the thickness of the first. This should be the greatest D2, D3. Right? Yes. So what do you have is then it may be able to take the stress. It may be able to take the stress. But again, what do you have is if you are varying the thickness, so you would need what? Different, uh, you have to shape these, right? You're talking about, uh, uh, you have to shape these insulators, you have to give them a proper shape, so you need a molding structure for this. You have to mold a number of different insulator discs, so which would again be uneconomical. If one has a different shape, the other has different, the other has different. As you move towards the, 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 the tower from the conductor, the thickness would decrease, which means the shape of each and every one is changing so your cost is increasing again I will not prefer this method similarly you can talk about the permittivity if epsilon naught is a constant epsilon r is a material constant so which means if my epsilon r1 is greater than epsilon r2 is greater than epsilon r3 and so on which means I am changing with the permittivity and by permittivity I mean this is a material constant so I am changing the material so as I go from the to from the conductor to the ground structure my material is changing with each disk so again Again, I'm going for different materials, not economical. I'm not going for this method as well. Is that fine? It is. Next, now if I come back to the basic, what is causing this problem? So the, cause, the, the problem is being caused by this leakage currents, IA and IB, these leakage capacitances. We saw in the previous video, if, if these were not present, I1 would be equal to I2 would be equal to I3 and the same voltages, it is a series circuit. But the problem is being caused by this shunt capacitance or this leakage current. So what do you have is how to negate this effect, you have to go for that method. Now how to reduce it or how to negate it. So let's suppose I take what I have. I take this string away from the grounding structure, which means what I go for a longer cross arm. I go for a longer cross arm. So, if I increase this distance, the, 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 the increase I provide in this distance, the negating I am this effect. So, but I have, you know, achieved my objective, I, I will, uh, instead of here, I will provide it over here. But I have a problem. This has a, a huge amount of a weight. This is providing a moment at the at the at the what at the ends of the cross arm. The the cross arm is acting as a moment arm for this. So what do you have it? This will pro, pro, produce bending. And to avoid this bending, again you would have to use a stronger structure. Currently angled iron is used. You will need to have a more stronger structure, a more stronger tower, a more stronger cross arm, which means more money. I cannot afford it. I cannot afford it. So, what will I do? I will not go for this method as well. This is also not a practical method. This is also not a practical method. What do I have? I go for a method called the use of a guard ring. Use of guard ring. Say, and, and you know, you can find out the values of these capacitances as well. You can find out the values of these capacitance. For example, for example, let me say, let me say that if I have this as C1, C2, if, if for example, this is C1, this is C2, this is C3, let's say this is C, this is C. I'm talking about this capacitance grading, okay? I'm talking about this capacitance grading. So you can find out that I1 is equal to I2 plus IA. I will write over here, I1 is equal to I2 plus IA. 
Isn't it like this? It is. If this is the case, you know, C1, C2, C3 are different. These are C. Why? Because this is the same distance, the same air is in between them. So this would be C. Right? Yes. Similarly, so then the voltages among them would be the same. So I1 would be omega. Wait, this is not working. Or let me go for my blue. So omega C V1. No, omega C1 V is equal to omega c2 v and plus ia is what so this is acting across this so v plus v2 v voltage across so omega 2 c uh c c and yes v so have a look c1 would be equal to what c1 would be equal to c2 plus a two times a c and similarly you apply a kcl again over here so you can find out your c3 as well this is how you find out the values anyways i'm not interesting in this i'm not interested in this because this is not a practical method i will go for my what for my method that is the use of a guard ring what is a guard ring so this is basically a, a toroidal electrode not circular it is an elliptical sort of an electrode which is provided at the conductor potential and 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 it is an elliptical sort of so what do you have is it's a metal electrode so again it will provide a capacitance it's a metal electrode provided over here at the conductor voltage so in elliptical form so which means what that again in between the metallic contacts it will provide what it will provide a capacitance in between the metallic contacts it will provide a capacitance and this capacitance normally is is, is a 10 percent of the value of this capacitance i will remove this one two and three this one is 20%, this one is 10%. Now, this will inject a current. I basically, I have to inject a current back into the system which is being leaked away. Right? Yes. So, let me name this as a small IA. Let me name this as a small IB. The problem is the leakage current. I am now putting back that current into the system which is leaking away. Let me see what happens. Now, why is this not taken exactly as 0.2? So I have not taken it deliberately so that we may have some leverage to discuss in the next topic. Anyways, it's, it's not taken, uh, you know, a higher because again, we are talking of stray capacitances and we cannot go for higher values because then this may provide an extra current. So again, we may have a problem or, you know, this may be interfering with the ground structure or we may have then different electric field calculations. So we don't want to, you know, complicate things for ourselves. We just want to do our own work in a very efficient way. These are the practical values mostly taken. 20%, 10%. You can try it for any other values as well or according to your book problems, whatever do you have. So now let us do the, the calculations and let's see that if we have relieved some stress or we have, you know, improved the string efficiency or not. So let's say KCL to node number one. Let's say this is node number one. So KCL to my node number one. The currents entering are I1 and small IA. I1 plus small IA and the currents leaving are I2 and a capital IA. Fine? Yes. So I1 is equal to omega CV1 plus small IA is 0.1 omega CV1. Again, the same potential. 0.1 omega CV1. This is equal to I2 is omega CV2. And plus IA is have a look 0.2 omega C and the voltage across this is have a look it is actually across these two points which means across these two points so the total voltage across this is V2 plus V3 or it is the total voltage V minus V1 I will go for V minus V1 to be simple is that fine it is and this I am using is what that I is equal to VY I is equal to VY right Ohm's law I is equal to Vy where Y is equal to omega C for capacitance where Y is equal to 1 over Z, right? Yes. So have a look your omega C would cancel out. This is V1. So this would be 1.1 V1 and this would be equal to V2 
plus 0.2 v2 and then a minus 0.2 v1 or I could have is a 1.3 v1 so 1.2 v2 1.2 v2 is equal to and I have a mistake somewhere uh, wait a minute wait a minute just you know this is 1.1 v1 then you have equal to v2 plus 0.2 this is v and minus 0.2 v1 yes 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 so I would have that uh, v2 is equal to v2 is equal to this would be 1.3 v1 and then a minus a 0.2 v let this be equation number one and, and I will keep on checking over here with myself as well this is a uh, 1.3 v1 minus 0.2 v yes fine now I apply my KCL to node number 2 KCL to my node number 2 so this gives me what I entering currents are I2 and small ib so I2 plus small ib and the leaving are I3 and capital IB I2 is omega c v2 plus a IB is 0.1 omega c the voltage across this is what v1 plus v2 or a total voltage minus v3 go for the simpler one and the simpler one is v minus v3 i'm going in terms of a minus because over here i also went in terms of minus so v minus a v3 this is equal to i3 would be omega c v3 plus IB is what IB is again this two point this is all the same point which means it's connected over here so again V3 point 0.2 omega C V3 is that fine it is so omega C cancels out eventually you have V2 plus 0.1 V minus 0.1 V3 and this is equal to V3 plus 0.2 V3 or this is a 1.2 v3 plus 0 0.1 1.1 1 .1 v3 right so 1.1 1 .1 v3 is equal to i will put the value of v2 also so you have 1.3 v1 not 1.1 1.3 1.2 1 .1, 1 plus 1.1 plus 0 0.1 is 1.3 v3 this is equal to v2 value put it over here please 1.3 v1 minus 0 0.2 v and and you are a plus 0.1 v plus 0.1 v so i would just put it as a minus 0.1 v and i will remove this thing fine yes similarly i will divide it by a 1.3 so i will get my value of v 3 in terms of what in terms of a v and v1 so this would be v1 minus 0 0.076 right v1 minus 0 0.076 times v let this be my equation number two i've got my v2 in terms of v1 and v i've got my v3 in terms of v1 and v fine yes now now what do you have my principal equation my principal equation is that the total voltage v is being divided into v1 v2 and v3 so from here I will put all these values and I will calculate my v1 in terms of v so I will have all these equations in terms of v1 and v so v is equal to v1 plus 1.3 v1 minus 0 0.2 v plus v1 minus 0.076 v fine yes do i have space i have a little bit of a space so uh, you know v comes out to be what v is equal to v1 plus 1.3 so 2.3 then you have what 3.3 v1 3.3 v1 and then for v what do you have 0 0.2 and 0 0.076 so minus 0 0.276 or over here 1.276 right uh, where is it 1.276 yes 1.276 v is 3.3 v1 or you could write what that your v1 is equal to 1.276 
upon 3.3 V and this will give you your value of V1 which is equal to 0.386 V. 0.386 times V and have a look I have achieved my objective of reducing the burden on the first unit from a 42% to a 38%. Similarly, you can find your V2 from equation number 1. Equation number 1 would give you the value of V2 which would be 1.3 times 0.386 V minus 0.2 V. Do the calculations. V2 comes out to be 0.30 V. 0.30 V. 0.30 30 V. This is taking 30%. Similarly, similarly from equation number 3, you can find out the value of V3 and this is equal to 0 0.31 volts. 0 0.31 times V, not volts. So have a look, I am going towards a little bit of uniformity, 3.0 and 3.1. Although I've got a gap of 3.8 and 3.0, but still the thing is that as I'm going further, this gap is reducing. As I'm going further, this gap is reducing. So I, I think that I am going to, to my objective. I have relieved the stress from a 42% to 38%. And similarly, let's talk about the string efficiency. Let's talk about the string efficiency, which is, which is what? The total voltage V divided by the number of discs multiplied by the voltage that is nearest. So what do I have? My eta in this case will be the total voltage V divided by the number of discs are 3 and the nearest is at a point 386 times V. So this gives me what? This gives me the string efficiency which I have not mentioned over here so I would go for the calculator and uh, uh, have a look where is the calculator okay 1 upon 3 multiplied by 0 0.386 and this is 86 0.86 this is 0.86, so which means that my efficiency is 86%, 86%. I have increased my efficiency from 79% to an 86%. Isn't this what I was talking about? In the, the, the beginning of the video, my objective was what? My objective was to reduce the stress on V1 which I achieved. My objective was to increase the string efficiency which I have achieved and I believe that is it for this video. I do not need to go any further. Right? Yes. But before, before finishing, let's say I have got only one point over here. I've got only one point over here is that sometimes in some books, you know, or in some problems you come across this that I have taken over here are these practical values 20% and 10% sometimes these are not given and you are asked for the values of these capacitances in order to inject the current so that you know your string efficiency increases so for that what do you have is so let's say you have the same three insulator disk this is one this is two and this is three right this is your voltage V what do you have is this is your ground structure and these are your shunt capacitances let's suppose let's suppose I write these shunt capacitances to be C1 let's suppose I I write these capacitances to be C2 and the guard ring capacitances these capacitances let's say I write this as CX and this one as CY. Now for a uniform voltage distribution or for an equal voltage distribution the current flowing through this would be I 
the current flowing through this would be I, the current flowing through this is I, I mean to say is that an equal amount of current will flow. And the currents entering or leaving these leakage currents on this injecting currents, let's say I name this as IC1, what have I named it over here is, let's say IC2, let's say for instance. This one is let's say ICX and this one is let's say IC. Why? So how do you find these capacitances? So let's suppose again from KCL over here at this particular node, let's say one. So at first node, what do I have is this I is the same. So which means that ICY is equal to IC one, right? Yes. And what is YCY? So it is Omega C and the voltage across this is what Omega C and the voltage across this is have a look so the voltage across this is V this is V and this is V so uh, uh, across these two points it is 2V so this is 2 times V and this is equal to this one is C Y and S is equal to I C 1 so this would be Omega C 1 times a V Omega C 1 times V which means that my C Y is equal to C 1 by 2 CY is equal to C1 by 2. This is CX I have written. Oh, this is CY. Yes? Yes. Similarly, you can find out this value by having a KCL over here at your node number 2. And that would be ICX is equal to IC2. ICX is equal to IC2. Because these currents are the same. So ICX is omega CX times V omega c x times v and this is equal to c2 is what omega c2 times and the voltage across this is v plus a v 2v 2v so c x is equal to uh, uh, is equal to 2 times c2 c1 basically c1 this 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 c1 is what the c1 is this constant capacitance between the tower and the grounding structure or you can have a generalized formula if you're asked for the pin capacitance at the point so you know pin capacitance capacitance of the pin or the pin capacitance i would write capacitance of the pin which is let's say cp so this would be the pin number p times c1 p times c1 divided by n minus p P times C1 divided by N minus P. Where? Where this C1 is what? C1 is the capacitance between tower and string which is a constant, right? P is the pin number. Which means over here at my node number 1, this is pin number 1. Node number 2, this is pin number 2. Or you could say this is node, right? Yes. And N is the number of disks. So for instance, for instance, you have your, this is first number pin or first number node. So C1 over here, C1, the capacitance, which is Cy that I denoted, Cy that you need to inject over here. This would be equal to what? Pin number one multiplied by C1. Number of disks are three minus pin number one. So this is equal to C1 upon two. Have a look. C1 upon two. And you can see it over here, I have also mentioned. My C1 is 0.2 times C. So what do I need to inject over here is a 0.1 times C. Similarly, if you go for your C2, if you go for your C2, what do you have is? This is basically your Cx. So pin number 2 multiplied by C1 divided by 3 minus 2. So this comes out to be 2 times C1, which I have not mentioned over here. This should have been 0.4C according to that formula. So what do you have is, let this be your homework. Let this be your homework. Put it equal to 0.4C and give me the values of V1 and give me the value of string efficiency. See what happens. Fine. Yes. Now these are written in most of the books because they use they, they use a word of a shielding wire, right? They say that this is a wire which is physically connected. This is a wire which is physically connected. Over here, I have not talked about that wire. I am talking about an electrode, a circular electrode, a, to a toroidal elliptical shape electrode, which you would have seen in the extra high voltage lines in the 500 kV. 
This is an electrode which is connected at the conductor potential which provides a capacitance, a stray capacitance as over here in between the metal contacts which is 10% of this value. So I've had my own discussion. This is on that wire discussion or that cable discussion. Anyways, you just check it for 0.4C and let me know what happens. I will finish this video over here. I will see you in the next one where let's say we analyze a four disc string. Till then take care. Goodbye.